Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is the first video of mine that you have ever clicked on. Today I'm doing a review of this from Dr. Dennis Gross. It is his Spectralite Eye Care Pro device. It's an LED device that promises to stimulate collagen and reduce fine lines and wrinkles. I'll give you a close up of the back of the box so that you can see the expectation that he has created in terms of what he is promising results wise from this product. I do like to give quite thorough reviews here on this channel so if you are into that just sit back and watch it. If you're not into that there are timestamps in the description box. The video is split into sections you'll be able to jump straight to whatever information it is you are interested in. Though I would recommend watching it the way I filmed it because I'm kind of putting all the information in because I think it's all relevant. So just saying. I would just watch it the way that I filmed it but if you really must skip use the timestamps in the description box and if you're not going to skip let's just get into it. <laughs> Section 1 is putting it into context of what I've done so far with my under eyes and where I was starting from when I started using this device. I'm 31, um, which I turned 31 a few weeks ago, so I'm quite newly 31, but that, that's my age in terms of um, my skin, my collagen production, all that kind of thing. I do sleep on the silk pillows, have done for several years, and I do use skincare daily. I do think generally you can do more advanced treatments, you know you can buy devices like this, but there's very little point in doing any of that and not doing the skincare. I think if you're only going to do one thing, do the skincare. What you do on a daily basis is going to have far more of an effect than doing a one-off treatment or a one-off course of a treatment. So I don't think there's any point in doing that and not supporting it with daily skincare. In terms of advanced treatments, last year I actually had filler under my eyes and I did a video all about that. Um, so I will link that up in the eye again it's quite thorough but there are timestamps in the description box if you just want to see um, you know the before and afters or see the, the procedure being filmed etc it's all in that video so I will link that up in the eye. Leading on from that it's now nine months later so I feel like I'm quite ready for a top up of that uh, it's something I will be doing again but off the back of that I had a few people asking me about lines under the eyes and whether the filler helped with that. So the filler is volume, it fills out the, the trough under your eyes which for my eye shape is really quite deep. Because the trough under my eyes is quite deep it creates a physical shadow, you can even you can see that now as I say I'm very much gearing up to hopefully get that done again in the near future. But it means there's a physical dip here um, because my eyes are hooded so this bit comes forward it's almost like if I have light coming from above it would hit here then it would hit here and this would be like this sort of concave darkness and although the filler doesn't help lines in that it doesn't target lines it does fill out the area bring more light into the area and I do think that helps the overall appearance of lines because it just light is flattering basically you know light reflects it makes you look more open and um, whereas if you're in darkness, you know, the lines are going to look deeper, they're going to look more shadowy, they're going to look more pronounced. So I think it helped with the appearance of the lines in that it's more flattering to have area that reflects light, that light reaches, than a really shadowy sunken in area. But the filler doesn't actually target lines or anything like that. For my personal eyes, one side of it is that I, I have very sensitive skin anyway. My skin is very, very reactive and my eyes are super reactive. I have eczema on my eyes and I also I just have a lot of allergies I have a dust allergy which is just you can't you can't really do anything about it because there is dust everywhere like it just is what it is I have a grass pollen allergy so again grass is mostly everywhere and um, so I do take pretty much a daily antihistamine tablet but you know there's a lot of dust there's a lot of grass I have other allergies as well and the way that my allergies generally manifest is through my eyes my eyes will get itchy sore red watery so all of that is to say that my eyes spend a lot of time in general being like itchy sore flaky dry super watery which is you know if they're flaking with the eczema or like if I wear eyeshadow like three days in a row they will get cracked they don't like things on that skin the skin around my eyes is very picky doesn't like things being on it so if I wear eyeshadow three days in a row like the skin will be really raw and red 
and it might actually start to crack. If the skin's like that and then I'm having an allergy and my eyes are watering and it's wetting that all the time, that exacerbates it. Obviously I try not to now, but when I was younger I used to like scratch and claw at my eyes, so there was a lot of physical um, activation happening there as well, you know, felt better in a minute while I was scratching the itch and then, you know, obviously probably just made it worse in the long run. So there's that whole side of um, my eyes, which is obviously to do with me personally, might not resonate, but the other side of my eyes is just the shape. So as I say, I got the filler because I've got sunken eyes, they're quite deep set, I feel like they're quite hollow, um, and because of the shape, I feel like at the sides of my eyes where people tend to get crow's feet, I don't really feel like that's that bad, but I feel like I've got worse lines like under my eyes here than other people, and I think that's to do with the shape and to do with that kind of concave nature and, you know, being able to sort of press up into those lines in a way that if this was not kind of, you know, it would just be sort of smooth. Does that make any sense? Sorry, that was a really weird visual to give you there, but I hope you know what I'm trying to say. But anyway, that is the sort of context of my personal under eyes to see if that relates to you or not. Um, so next section is the unboxing. This is the box. Comes out like that. Quite annoying because if you're holding it up, you know, like that, it falls out. Not the, the most well thought through, I don't think. So when you take this bit out, in the actual box you get your instruction manual, then here you've got the device itself. You get a little pouch that the device does fit in, should you want to travel with it or store it in this. But in this I've got the other products that came in the box, or the other accessories that came in the box. First is the strap that fits onto the device should you feel the need to use this to keep it in place. And the last item that you get in the box is the charger. So I will give you a close up of this. This is the connection. And then the other end of the charger is a USB. That's everything that you get in the box. Now this retails for £175 in the UK. I think it's $160 in the US and generally in the US there's a much higher culture of discounts so I feel like you probably never need to pay full price for it in the US as well. So it is really really expensive and one of the things that I would say that I was kind of mm, a little bit irked by is that you do just get that cable, you don't get a plug which I just feel for £175 they could put a plug in. If I was a bit less cynical I would say it is an environmentally friendly move to create less waste because yes we do all have USB plugs now However, I just kind of think it's a lazy move that means they don't actually need to put a plug in for different countries and I just think for the price of it you should get a plug. So yeah. And the other thing is like I'm sure I will be able to get a replacement cable should that one give up but and I don't know if it's maybe more common in the US but that connection is not a very common connection in the UK. It's not like a Samsung connection, it's not an Apple connection, it's not something you can just wander into the supermarket and buy. Um, so it's, yeah, I just a little bit irked by the fact you don't get a plug and the fact that it couldn't have just used a sort of standard mini USB kind of charge that you could have easily replaced should the cable go. Other than that, those are the contents that you get in the box for your 175 Great British Pounds or your equivalent price in your area. So I've put it into context at the start of my under eyes where I kind of sit with them and my concerns are as I kind of I think I've already said without actually specifying are my under eyes rather than the side of my eyes. So I'll put in some footage of my under eyes like at peace so that you can see like I've got a line under my particularly under my right eye here this one line um, that is just there all the time. It's not from me creating an expression or anything, whereas I feel like, yes, I have fine lines at the side of my eyes, but they are generally from me smiling particularly widely. I don't look at my eyes at rest and think there's lines at the side, whereas this one under my eye is very, very developed. I have kind of noticed I sleep on a silk pillowcase, but I go to sleep and, you know, my head's on the pillow and it is what it is, and I wake up and at some point my hand has moved up to the pillow and I do this. 
and I create this line right here. So I do have to say, I think I'm creating that line that way more than anything else and if I'm doing that pretty much every night it's it's kind of a, a constant battle. I'm actually considering I got an advert which for I think it's called the groove pillow and it's like a groove and it's actually more for your neck it's to support your neck but I'm kind of thinking would that stop me bringing my hand up if I felt like my neck and head were like I think it sort of orthopedically aligns you I use a memory foam pillow as it is at the moment but I'm considering that so that may well be a future video but basically my thing is my lines under my eyes rather than my lines at the side that was what I was really hoping this would tackle now the next section is using the device you put it on your face you turn it on I'll insert footage you'll be able to see it You'll feel like a superhero, it's quite cool for the first couple of times and then you just, you get used to it. Now the light is quite bright when you put it on at first, like the first couple of times I used it I was definitely like oh and I just kind of lay in bed and didn't do anything. After a couple of times I'd sort of adjusted to it and I could use my phone but it throws the colours of your phone out. There's a game that I play on my phone called Two Dots. It has a colourblind setting that you can turn on and instead of you having to match the colours, you match shapes. So I then kind of moved on and had the colourblind uh, setting enabled in Two Dots and was playing that absolutely fine because I wouldn't have been able to match the colours on a phone screen when I had this light turned on. But what I've actually ended up doing is I've been using it is I put it on and I go brush my teeth because this is a three minute time session you turn it on it lasts for three minutes it turns itself off at the end of the three minutes so that's actually pretty much ideal time to brush your teeth so that's what I've ended up doing whilst I'm doing it so you absolutely the first couple of times that you use it kind of throws you and you sort of just have to keep your eyes closed and get used to it but you do get used to it and you know you can function I don't think I'd be like trying to run up and down stairs or anything like that like your your vision is slightly impeded by it but if you, you know, if you go into the bathroom and you have your toothbrush and your toothpaste and then you turn this on, like you can see enough to reach your toothbrush and like brush your teeth and you know where you are. So it doesn't impair you from doing things when you've got it on. And in terms of the fit, I find that this fits absolutely fine. I haven't needed to use this strap, but you do have the strap so that you can tighten it should you wish to. So I suppose the key thing we all want to know are the results you know what effect did it have so I will insert the photos that I took from before I started using it to once I had finished my initial 10 weeks which is how long they say you should use this for and I used it every single day for 10 weeks <laughs> What I feel I have to say here is that I don't think the photos are very impressive and I kind of wonder now if that's partly why there are not a lot of reviews on this because I don't think it's mind blowing but what I kind of find is that because this line particularly under my eye is quite permanent is that when I'm wearing makeup my makeup sinks into it as the day goes on and although I didn't think the makeup free photos showed a massive difference where I actually think I saw more of a difference was when I was wearing makeup and it still sinks into it and it's still definitely, I feel like having makeup on actually emphasises the line because it kind of sinks into it and you know brings attention to it more so than when I'm not wearing makeup but I didn't feel my makeup was sinking into it just as much. <laughs> So I do think it did actually improve that particular line, not mind-blowingly, not enough that I actually noticed it not wearing makeup, but I do think it has actually softened it because I'm noticing that my makeup doesn't sink in to the same extent, so it definitely has done something, 100% has done something. Whether that something is enough to justify the cost of this is debatable. I didn't see, as I said, I've got fine lines at the side of my eyes but I'm not, I'm not at a point with them yet where 
I'm seeing them when my face is at rest. I see them when I create them through making expressions. So I feel like I can't really comment on the side of my eyes, but definitely for that line, which is the, the main one that I was totally focused on, I do think it did something. Something else I just want to acknowledge, one of the very few reviews that I found of it was of a lady who was a little older than me, who also had hooded eyes, and she said she felt that it made her eyes a little bit less hooded. I don't personally think it's made my eyes any less hooded. So I did some winged liner, took some footage like looking down then looking up into the screen. You can see my eyes are still hooded enough that when I've got liner on like that, you don't see my eyeshadow when I'm looking straight ahead. I don't think it really made my eyes less hooded, but I do think maybe if this was looser, which I know as I age, hooded eyes kind of droop and this skin here will sort of sit on top of my eye, it may well be tightening that skin. Although I didn't see a massive difference with that just now, I've got the device so I'm going to keep using it and hopefully that might help that drooping not happen to quite the same extent or quite as quickly as it would happen if I wasn't using the device. But that is speculation that I'm going to keep using it and hope that that's the case. I can't honestly say that I saw any particular difference at this point using it. The other thing that I want to say about this, and again this isn't very quantifiable, but I had my under eye filler in November last year. At the time of starting to use this, I didn't feel I needed that topped up. I finished my course of this in May, that was my 10 weeks done, and I still didn't feel I needed that filler topped up. I walked because I did think I would originally get that filler topped up much more quickly than I thought I would have done it by now because I had really deep troughs to start with but I was sort of just so pleased by how much of a difference it had made that I wasn't desperate to go out and get it redone. So when I started using this device I wasn't desperate to get it redone. At the end of May when I finished my 10 weeks wasn't desperate to get it redone and then I stopped using the device for the whole of June and July because I kind of thought, especially because the results hadn't been mind-blowing, I was like, I'm going to stop using it and see if I notice that I've stopped using it rather than noticing that I'm using it. Do you know, sometimes I find that with skincare is that I can't quite put my finger on what it's doing and I don't think it's doing all that much and then when I stop using it that's when I'm like, oh actually it was doing this and I just didn't notice it whilst it was doing it but I noticed it when it was taken away. So that's why I'm doing this video like two months on from the actual course of using it is because I wanted to see what a difference if any I would notice when I stopped using it and what I would say is I think it may be maybe because I am in the stage of fine lines rather than really deep set lines other than this particular one that bothers me maybe what I didn't notice was that it was volumizing and it was stimulating collagen because I wasn't desperate to get my filler topped up and I'm still not desperate, like, I think, put this all into context, like, you know, it's it's not life changing, like, it's not anyone's, it shouldn't be anyone's top priority. If it is really, if it is honest to God, your top, top priority, like, I think there's more work needs done on your mental self than your physical self, do you know what I mean? Like, obviously I, oh, my necklace is all twisted round. Obviously I have put time and effort and energy and money into treating this, like it bothers me enough that I have done that, so I'm not saying it shouldn't bother you, like that, this video wouldn't exist if it didn't bother me, but I think you just have to make sure it bothers you to a healthy, if there is a healthy way for it to bother you, it bothers you enough that you might try something but it should not be the pinnacle of your fixations and if it is, I think, you know, you need to kind of look elsewhere um, for what work to get done. But yeah, like, so I'm not, I'm not desperate. Like, I, I don't mean to make it sound like I'm like, I'm absolutely, this is all I think about day and night now. It's not that, but I wasn't keen to get my filler, well, I wasn't not keen. I was always going to get my filler done again, but I wasn't like, oh, I really feel that I need it. And I feel, since I stopped using this device, I feel like I have dramatically noticed a difference in my under eyes and I'm really like planning to get that filler topped up again. And I'm kind of wondering, and again, this is speculation, 
but I am wondering if I hadn't stopped using it, would my under eye filler last a little bit longer? Now, I'm not going to be able to confirm that until I get the under eye filler done again and then see if I keep using this device. Do I last longer than nine months without thinking, I really want this filler topped up again? Does it make it, you know, do I, do I go longer without needing, without feeling that I want the top up? Like, I can't, I won't be able to tell you that until next year when I'm in that position. So it's just speculation, but it was so dramatic actually that in May, absolutely fine. Then kind of start of June, I sort of felt like I was noticing my under eyes again. And then by like the end of June, start of July, I was like, yeah, I'll need to like seriously like start putting some money aside to get that filler done again because I want it done before X, Y and Z at the end of the year. And it very much coincided with me finishing my course of the Eye Care Pro. Summing up, it has an effect. It is not a mind blowing, life changing effect but it does have an effect on lines and wrinkles and I have good reason to suspect that actually it was having more of an effect on volume than I gave it credit for at the time. However, it is not very much of an effect and although I'm saying that I think it gave it more volume, my filler also like 9 to 12 months is kind of the average for that filler to last it did very much coincide with me stopping using the eye care device but it would also have been months seven and eight from me getting that filler and then this would be month nine so this is generally like people are saying 9 to 12 months by now would be the start of that time for me to say that I have lost the effects of the filler and I don't think I've fully lost the effects of the filler I don't think it's back to how it was but it's definitely not as fresh as it was either. So it could just coincide with that. It's so hard to say, I can't say for definite one way or the other, but the timeline does kind of work out that either could be the case. However, I think the non mind blowing results is, is probably an indicator of why there are not a lot of reviews in this product because it's so much easier to say, this product is brilliant and I love it, or even to say this was a complete waste of money, I, it had no visible effects, I really regret purchasing it and honestly this device I just land somewhere in the middle and that's really lukewarm and it's not that exciting to report back and it's not that exciting to hear but it's the honest truth in terms of reviewing this product. I think for me I use some money that I got for, for Christmas to buy this product so I don't if it had been my own, it was obviously my own money that I had been gifted, but if I had been saving up to buy that device out of my paycheck or out of my budget, I don't know if the results have been enough that I'd be happy to say that I'd spent that money on it, but I had that money, it was a Christmas present and I wouldn't unspend it. Now, like I, I like having it enough and I feel it's maybe done enough that, and if I continue to use it, that it might help preventatively and um, as I said with like the dripping on uh, the tops of my eyes and things I don't want to unspend it, I don't want to give the device back so I don't regret buying it. However, as I said, it's a lot of money. When I eventually made the plunge I had that money sitting there from Christmas and I, when I got it I actually thought am I just going to buy that, that Dr Dennis Gross Spectralite that I've been looking at for so so long, as I, like literally years. I have been thinking about this device and I kind of thought about buying it straight at Christmas and I didn't and I didn't and I kind of waited and waited and I wasn't really sure what I was kind of waiting for and then Space NK did a gift with purchase where if you spent £150 you got like a big box of stuff and that was I made the choice at that point that tipped me over was that gift with purchase so I spent £175 but as well as getting the device I got a whole load of stuff that particularly for me because I do track my beauty inventory and I track my usage and I'm now really quite analytical about how I'm using products, those gifts with purchases like I know that I haven't yet had to replace my daily vitamin C serum because I've been using vitamin C serums from that gift with purchase like I keep a real tab now like I have a physical spreadsheet of my products so I know 
that having that has actually saved me money this year even though I got it for free with the purchase of the device so I've really seen the benefits to that gift with purchase you know and I didn't just buy it because it was a gift with purchase it was the contents of the gift with purchase that sort of tipped me over and I think had I not got that I may be more inclined to say uh, I'm not happy that I spent all that money on it but I think if I'd been able to get it either at a discount or as I got it with that sort of bonus gift I'm happy I don't regret it but I don't think that would be the case if I had paid £175 only for this device. The last thing I just want to say is that this device, as with any advanced thing, does not replace your daily skincare. I think I've already said that. But I think this device kind of sits somewhere in the middle between daily skincare and like salon treatments. And I think for me, if it's one or the other, like, so if I get my under eye filler again, and that's I think about £300, versus £175, the under eye filler has definitely for me so far been the thing that has made the biggest difference. I would have that done rather than buying this device if it was a case of one or the other because £175 would be such a chunk towards that. However, I also do accept once you buy that device you own it and you can continue to use it whereas the filler does need topped up, Botox needs topped up, you know, um, if you get profile you need to get it done every however often. Like. All of these advanced things are temporary, whereas you pay once to own this and then you own it. So I do, I do see the benefits to that, but I think for me, ultimately, I would rather splurge once a year on an advanced procedure like the filler than this device if it was going to be a choice between the two. And on that note, the next thing I'm going to be trying is under eye Botox to try and again target this line. What I'm going to do is create a playlist. The under eye filler video that I did last year will be the first video in the playlist, this will be the second and I will add as I try different things to target this area, different treatments that I'm trying, different you know approaches. If I think they're worthy of a video I will make a video and I will add it to that playlist and then I hope it will be useful for any of you who have really sort of similar eye shape to mine who are experiencing the same issues because I had so many messages off the back of that filler video and um, you know on here and on um, Instagram and things so I know that it did resonate with a lot of people and I really like it was it was nice to know I'm not alone and um, but I hope like maybe organizing all these things into a playlist will be something that those of you who share these concerns can click through keep an eye on and watch the next one will be trying under eye Botox so Stay tuned for that, hit subscribe if you're interested in that and you haven't hit subscribe already. If you liked this video or found it helpful please do give it a thumbs up. If there are any questions you have that I haven't answered please just leave them down below, I will come back to you. Thank you so much for watching, for spending this time with me and I will see you in my next video. Bye!